Following the attacks in Brussels, both across Europe and here at home, people are grappling with how to effectively respond to terrorism. My next guest wrote an article called How the Terrorists Lose in the U.S. News and World Report. Jeff Eggers joins us now from Washington. He's a retired Navy SEAL officer and a former special assistant to the president for national security affairs. So, Jeff, right off the bat, I want to ask you, what is the easiest way to deny terrorists that fear? Thanks, Jamie. And it's good to be uh, with you here today. And uh, there's no question that what happened in Brussels last week was a clear tragedy and that we're going to need to remain united with Europe as will the world. But the more important thing will be united, uh, being united it's, uh, internally within Europe. Uh, and resist the temptation to give in to xenophobic or nationalistic uh, sentiments that would really weaken uh, Europe by uh, creating uh, borders that, that become closed and really uh, kind of imperil the fragile economic recovery that's ongoing. So what responses do you think we've started to see now in Europe since the attacks have happened? Well, the good news is that uh, it looks like Belgians, for the most part, are resisting uh, the temptation for a backlash against Muslims and starting to exhibit some signs of resilience. Obviously, there's much more to do in terms of the follow through of the investigative work, uh, the law enforcement uh, forensics that need to uh, occur now with connecting the dots to uncover the rest of this plot. But the real, the real emphasis here needs to be on getting back to business and demonstrating some show of resilience. The, the, the strength of resilience is really uh, that it denies the terrorists to their objectives that you're tra trying to achieve. If, if they get back to business, then what the terrorists see is that their terror attacks are ineffective. And if they see that these attacks are futile, then they'll be less motivated in the future to try to conduct these type of attacks. I don't know if you saw, uh, but just a short while ago, there were some demonstrations in Belgium uh, with that anti-Muslim uh, backlash that, that you were talking about. So it seems that um, some of that happened did, uh, did happen today, but the police were able to get that situation under control and push those people back, and they hope to not have them re-enter. I just wanted to clarify there. So, Jeff, it seems, though, as a whole, Europe really seems to have a problem. You have well-coordinated cells of terrorists, no borders between the countries, dozens of different languages spoken. How can police catch up? Great question. You're right. Europe faces a more acute problem than we do here in the United States. Uh, but it's a problem that, that can be managed. For one thing, they have a greater percentage of Muslims than we do in the United States. Uh, in, in some of these countries that have been affected, upwards of 5 or 6 percent, whereas we are more like 1 percent here in the United States. Uh, but more importantly and more problematically is the fact that the Muslim population is less assimilated uh, and less integrated than we have in the United States. And that's something that's only going to be exacerbated by the ongoing refugee crisis. So they really need a long-term plan for starting to address, what, uh, address that crisis in the future. I want to ask you, too, after 9-11, we here in America realized that different agencies really did um, a poor job of sharing information with each other. Do European countries need to do a better job of working together in your mind? Absolutely. I mean, this was one of the clearest lessons learned after the 9-11 Commission uh, here in the United States. In addition to resilience and the importance of uh, good law enforcement is the business of sharing information uh, through intelligence agencies. One of the things that we underwent here in the United States was a shift in culture in information sharing and within the intelligence community. They previously had a culture that was one of need to know in order to have the information and gradually that's been shifting to a culture of need to share. And that same type of lesson needs to, it looks like, needs to be applied here uh, within the European agencies. Well, and beyond that too, Jeff, do you expect to see any significant change maybe in immigration policy throughout Europe? Well, again, I would, I would hope that, that we would resist uh, those calls both uh, within Europe and in the United States because I think that they actually uh, enable the goal that the, t the terrorists are trying to achieve. One of the best ways to counter uh, these types of attacks is to demotivate the terrorists by rejecting the objective that they're looking for. And in this case, it would be to weaken their victims by having their victims respond in a way that would close borders and make uh, good, good economic growth more difficult. All right, Jeff Eggers, thank you so much for being with us and your expertise. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jamie. Good to be with you.